Nova Scotia is keeping their ban on fracking, but they've certainly got no ban on accepting transfer payments built on fracking revenues from the West. A recently released analysis of Nova Scotia's natural gas reserves lists their economic potential of between 20 and 60 billion US dollars. That's not even in Canadian pesos. That's great news for jobs and royalty revenue, but here's the kicker. Upwards of 40 billion US dollars of that natural gas reserve is only accessible through fracking. And Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil says that he will not reverse his government's ban on fracking passed in 2014, saying he doesn't feel like his province is passing up on any economic opportunity by doing this. That's right, Stephen McNeil is going to leave $40 billion in economic wealth for his province from 7 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in the ground because of an unscientific fear-mongering ban on hydraulic fracturing. That's crazy, but because of how Canada's confederation is structured, this is pretty easy for Nova Scotia to do. They stand to lose pretty much nothing because Stephen McNeil isn't really against fracking and he certainly isn't against the economic benefits of fracking. He just doesn't want to be the guy to do it. He doesn't want to have to face down the anti-science environmentalists and develop his own natural resources. McNeil will just let someone else do all the dirty work. McNeil can just get a hefty equalization payment taken from Western Canada. In 2018-2019, the government of Nova Scotia will receive $3.2 billion through major transfer payments. Nova Scotia receives $3,339 in federal transfers per person. That's over double the $1,421 in federal transfers that Alberta receives, making Alberta a net contributor to Confederation and Nova Scotia a net taker. Nova Scotia would rather take an equalization payment from the federal government, born of natural resource revenue from the West, to support their economy rather than develop their own natural resources, get those high paying jobs and bring in royalty revenue to the government for social programs. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say that equalization payment is born out of fracking in the West. According to 2015 data, 215,000 wells have been hydraulically fractured in Alberta, BC and Saskatchewan over the last 60 years. And it's, of course, no hellscape of destruction out here. The nation's food supply is actually grown over top of fracking and no one is dead yet. Most people don't even know where and if fracking is even happening near them. But this anti-fracking wackiness isn't just limited to Canada. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has set off a chain reaction with his opposition to natural gas and fracking. A lack of natural gas pipelines in New York State coupled with Obama's war on coal has caused home electricity rates in the Northeast to average about 19 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour compared to the national average of just 12 to 13 cents. New York State sits atop the Marcellus Shale deposit and instead of developing it like Ohio, West Virginia and Pennsylvania, New York State has banned fracking, banning the jobs and the revenue and driving up natural gas prices for everyone in the region. ISO New England, a not-for-profit independent power grid operator, is now warning that during extremely cold weather, natural gas pipeline constraints will limit the ability to get access to fuel for natural gas powered electricity plants. The chickens grown in New York State are now coming home to roost everywhere else. The pipeline bans and fracking bans in New York State are going to hurt the poor, making the ability to just be warm in cold weather either too expensive or too scarce through man-made shortages in natural gas. But isn't that always the way? Progressives love to use the poor as a political weapon and then they just hurt them with their bad policies. And in Nova Scotia's instance, another province or three can do the heavy lifting while they abandon $40 billion in revenue. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. What you just saw there was my daily video here on the Rebel, but I also have my own weekly full-length show called The Gun Show, along with a lot of other amazing premium content. Katie Hopkins has a new column with us. John Cardillo has his own full-length show now. To get access to my show and all of our amazing premium content, become a Rebel subscriber today.